Sandra, welcome to our uh, episode eight of uh, Her Stories, where we share uh, stories and experiences of women, uh, women leaders like you. And then so that uh, you can help the, you know, pave the way for a younger generation of women who are trying to build a career in marketing and technology. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Welcome, Sandra. Great. Thank you. Great. So, Sandra, so I see that uh, you are VP Marketing and uh, Managing Director at Visible, right? So at Visible, how does your day go on usually? Uh, so I'm uh, an early bird. I wake up usually around 6 a.m. I walk, I have two dogs, so I walk my two dogs in the neighborhood. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky enough to, to live uh, in the countryside of Paris. Um, then back home, I practice a quick 10 minutes yoga session before I shower. Wow. Um, <laughs> And then I start preparing, you know, the the stuff for my son. He's uh, close to seven years old. I have two other, but they are much older than that. Wow. Um, and um, I have to admit that I check my emails here and there in between all of those activities. Sometimes <laughs> we're walking at the same time. Um, and then um, I have some kind of rituals. Mm -hmm. uh, Specifically, when I return from school, which takes me uh, about a 15 minutes walk, um, I have some rituals that are very important to me. You know, years ago, when I was really struggling with high levels of pressure, it was specifically in the corona time. And yeah. also, I had a lot of responsibilities and I felt really overwhelmed. Uh, I, I, I have been having a coach for years and she encouraged me to identify ways to compensate the stress. Uh, mm -hmm. was moments of joy yeah moments right. that I really appreciate and and th this is the reason why I'm, I'm really using the word on purpose rituals mm -hmm. is because I love preparing a coffee in a nice coffee mm -hmm. mug I, I, I like to, yeah it, it, it's it's important and and I tend probably to over appreciate but it's mm -hmm. very you know I I, I I make sure that I have them every every day um, and I have a warm, welcoming working environment here. Currently, I am at home, mm. but I have offices in Berlin, in Hamburg, in Paris, because this is where our three uh, uh, offices are for our company. And I also make sure that those are very welcoming working environments for me, where I have pictures or drawings <laughs> of my kids, you know, to warm up somehow the environment. So this is my, 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 my the beginning of my day. Lovely, lovely, lovely start to the day. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like an active and a busy day, you know. Great. Uh, so, uh, Sandra, you know, for growing up, all of us have some inspirations that, you know, we always aspire to, uh, you know, movie characters or, you know, fictional characters or anyone, a uh, real person in our life. So for you, while growing up, who are the women uh, in your life that have served as an inspiration? So I hope I'm not going to disappoint people, but the person that I'm going to nominate is not well known. It's my mother. Lovely. <laughs> and I tell you why she's a sort of inspiration. And I think she doesn't even know that I'm saying that. She doesn't even, even speak English, so she couldn't understand yes. what I'm saying. <laughs> but Mothers matter. are humble. <laughs> you know, the, the thing is that she's handicapped uh, with polio, polio mielitis. Um, um, She's from a very poor Polish background. Mm -hmm. uh, she was raised in a Red Cross center in the east side of Paris. Mm -hmm. And she fought her whole life, earning her place in the French community, in the French society. Mm -hmm. She worked hard. She could have decided not to work because of her handicap. And she decided to work hard to gain um, recognition and to gain also certificates after certificates, because you can also guess that she was she didn't get any diploma by default when she was young. Still, she, she moved up the ladder with her strength and her drive. Mm -hmm. And and she, on top of that, I have to say that she also fought for having a baby because of her handicap. It took her seven years. And this is so inspiring for me. This is somehow a little bit risky as well because that puts a lot of pressure, mm -hmm. uh, that put a lot of pressure on myself, on my shoulders, because she set high expectations. She pushed me to be very autonomous, to be ambitious, to be hardworking. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, it's 
a beautiful inspiration. Wow. Wonderful. Wonderful, such an inspiration. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure she's a role model, not not just to you, but everyone in your family as well. I mean, uh, kudos to her. Yes, great. I mean, yeah, um, I agree with uh, Shamo. It sounds like a definite inspiration for uh, all of of all of our uh, audience and all. So uh, I'm sure you heard of a saying, uh, "Empowered woman, empower women," and then. Uh, uh, about yourself how do you empower yourself and the women around you or in your personal life or in your organization yeah that's a, that's an first of all that's a beautiful word that mm -hmm. you're using and and thank you so much for um putting so so much emphasis on empowering people and i would start with this you know empowering by definition is just to put power into yes uh, which which means that you can enable, you can power, you can put power into a anything, anyone around you if you want and if you believe in it. And empowering people, enabling people to do something on their own that you believe that they are capable of because you believe in their capacity and courage and you, you can encourage them, you can support them. Right. This is really something that, I'm trying to do every day because I was myself very much empowered by my own parents, by my mother first, as I was mentioning. Um, but it's also a value that I have in my heart, which means that I am empowering every single day all of the people around me, not only my family, but my colleagues, and whether they're men or women, whether they're young or old, whether they are disabled or not. You know, it doesn't matter. For me, this is really... Um, in, this is really important. This is what I have been doing all my life. I put a lot of passion and I also take on, on one side, it's it's a lot of energy that I put in there. But on the other side, I, I take a lot of pleasure right. in seeing those people, you know, grow in their career, evolve, learn, sometimes make mistakes yes. and not succeed. But it's fine as well, you know, as long as you are courageous to try out. And and seeing some people, and I have I'm I'm lucky I have been working for 25 years. I have seen so many people around me spreading their wings, and right. and it's 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 a pleasure to see that actually you saw that actually they were capable. You encouraged them, and then they managed to do it on their own. It's it's amazing. So of course, as I was saying, it it requires a lot of um energy uh, to build relationship and i build a lot of close relationship with my team members and my colleagues uh, to invest time mm -hmm. in, in in guide them give them the means to achieve their potential um but as i was saying i, I take a lot of pleasure uh in also sharing my own knowledge my own experience it might not apply it might you know it's it's not because you right. share how you did right. things that actually it's going to succeed for the others neither but but it's also a way for me, it's also probably a reason why I decided to teach sometime, some years ago already, because I, I want I want to prolong. I want to, I, I don't want to keep my experience, my, my, my uh, knowledge for myself. It's very important to hand over to the others so that they can make it their own and that they can grow. So mm -hmm. empowering people, um, of course, also goes through enabling them to learn new skills. So... Mm -hmm my company but it's, it's it has been in in many companies before it is important important that we offer coaching training learning oh. you know offering the opportunity for attending conferences joining programs i think this is a very good way also to to empower people absolutely um, Absolutely, Sandra. In fact, uh, cannot agree more with you. Uh, let me just take a couple of minutes here, you know, to talk about uh, uh, the initiative that we are uh, we have come across. You know, uh, when the founder of this company, you know, Manan Sheikh, when uh, we had a brainstorming session with him, he exactly had the same opinion that you have. You know, because he had achieved so much in the professional world as well. So his idea was, so what can we do to give it back to this professional community? And that is when the thought came to his mind, where he thought of empowering women and uh, you know forming an all women's team right from 
to the security of you know guard who frisks you while coming into the uh, you know owner of the company so we thought let's have an all women's team let's give them an opportunity to succeed and not just women from a particular sector you know we want to encourage women who have been introvert or who have lost their confidence you know while growing up or so on so forth and just giving them an opportunity to express themselves we we are ready to give them the tools to succeed impart the training knowledge give them the best of uh, you know the uh, b2b and b2c coaching as so to speak and ensuring that they have room to succeed out here so that was his vision that was his dream you know to give it back to the women uh, community and when you were talking about your experience and your words could relate to that uh, sandra in fact that brings me to my next question you know as you mentioned that uh, empowered women do have the capacity to think dynamically and mm -hmm. we have seen a paradigm shift over the last uh, you know few decades where uh, the the cliched male dominated uh, you know senior management level has now seen a very refreshing change and many strong women are uh, you know calling the shots right now so in your opinion how different is it when an empowered woman uh, is in a in a situation where they are doing the decision making how do you think that's different from the normal uh, sector so if the question is about what is the difference between women and men, for example, as influencers, right. yes. as um, um, empowering uh, power, I would say yes. women are dynamic leaders of change. Absolutely. They are galvanizing other women. You know, there's so much strength with women. Yes. Um, they claim their rights, they strengthen the communities, they fight for the causes that they believe in. There's so much energy, I'm, I'm using this word again. And as a consequence, women's presence on management teams is generally associated with a stronger social commitment, a more participatory uh, mm -hmm. style, leadership, uh, style they are more sensitive they are more thoughtful they are more long-term looking right you know and it's it's very interesting if if you i mean this is of course only my opinion but uh, but i read a lot which is aligned with what i'm saying but what what is still disappointing is that when you're looking at the percentage of women in in boards of directors and i'm thinking right. of course i'm looking only at Germany and France where Visible is located, it's still like plateauing around the 20%. Sure, that's what I was hinting at. And uh, so so women have still have a long way to go uh, of having equal representation in positions of power in, in, in companies, in, including in, in Europe. I know that it's much higher in the US, but we have a way to go because of that, um, that strength. What, what, what they bring. Right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Beautifully put, uh, Sandra. Cannot agree more. As I mentioned, you know, women are definitely the stronger gender. No two ways about it. Yeah. So talking about the uh, leadership roles and decision making. So, Sandra, uh, so how can women support uh, uh, other women in various organizations and the leadership roles? How do you think uh, it will affect? You know, Women, as we were saying, they are they can be powerful allies for other women. I think it's for the whole community, but for other women. They have a chance to develop greater influence and impact, um, as we were saying, by not only revealing their authentic, most effective leadership style, but also enable their mm -hmm. peers to do so. Yeah. And and I'm thinking about three potential ways like one is making sure that other women around you are heard are considered are visible are celebrated and boost their confidence i think this is the number one for me like make them visible make them recognize the second one is to join communities of other women mm -hmm. in your respective domain it can be you know IT, it can be marketing, it can be digital, it doesn't matter, but join other communities. 
and in 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 support them and in make them even stronger by your participation. And it's easy to find them by city, by region, by whatever. And then the third one for me is offering your own time to mentor other women. Mm -hmm. And of course, again, like it takes time and you can do it at different levels. You don't have to specifically join as an, an official organization, but, but share your own experience, share being, provide an ear to the others. Right. And I would say those are very simple ways that don't really require so much time, but they are essential. Wonderful, wonderful. So Sandra, uh, you know, uh, moving on uh, uh, ahead, uh, you've mentioned that you've got an enriched experience of 25 years and counting. And we already know that your, uh, you know, motivational factor has been your mom's right from the tender age. But I'm sure you've experienced quite a few uh, challenges while growing up and while moving up the ranks. One question that we would love to hear from you, uh, what your response would be is, uh, what keeps you ticking? You know, what keeps you going each day? What keeps you motivated uh, since you have seen so much in the last 25 years? I would say, you know, when I started my career, I was working at Vivendi and I saw a bunch of women focusing so much on fulfilling only one side of their life. Right. Um, and without really having the choice. So of course it was 25 years ago. So the society was still different from what it is today, but they had no other choice than either focusing on their career or building a family. It was either or. Right. And they didn't take enough time for themselves. They didn't. So it, it was a choice not founding a family because you wanted to have a beautiful mm -hmm. career or the other way around. So they gave up on something. Right. And, and when, of course, they realized that years later, it was too late. And for me, this sounds unfair. And I, I was talking to some of those women. So this is one of the things that, um, yeah, this is one of the, the arguments. Another one is that personally, I have encountered and still do, to be honest, so many pushback questioning comments about my position, about my communication style, about my enthusiasm, about my passion, about my behavior, my reactions, because I am a woman mm -hmm. um, in any given situation. Um, and of course, this would not have taken place if I were a man. Sure. So women face a very uneven playing field at work. It is real, for me, it's obvious it's a real bias, you know? And f female performance is frequently underestimated. Women mm -hmm. need to work harder. This is what I hear from everyone around me to prove that they are just as capable as men. So that would be the second, the second thing that really drives me in this direction. And the third one, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we cannot do anything around it. It's that there are internal factors that lie within ourselves as women. It's part of mm -hmm. our education that Absolutely. prevent us from positioning ourselves prominently in organizations. You know, often women, they credit their accomplishments to external factors, like we were lucky or we were well supported by our environment. Yeah. Right. Whereas men attribute their their success to innate qualities or skills. Sure. So I would say all of those three are really reasons for me to support each other, to support other women, to empower other women, to lift that perception and mm -hmm. ease is our lives and, and enable us to thrive. Wonderful, wonderful. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just hearing you speak, we we feel so charged up, Sandra. I mean, yeah. the passion that comes through, the passion that comes through with what you speak is definitely uh, you know refreshing to see. Thanks, thanks for that, Sandra. You're welcome. Yes, I mean, actually, so your response actually uh, you know uh, makes me to ask you another question, which is uh, very important and one of my favorite questions that I ask from everyone. <laughs> So uh, talking about the women empowerment always, uh, you know, uh, arises some, uh, you know, questions about uh, women's flexible flexibility, uh, women uh, flexible hours, that, you know, maternity leaves or, you know, the barriers that always happen in the workplace. So according to you or that experience that you have yourself experienced, what practical steps have you taken uh, to reduce those barriers such as 
uh, you know, flexible working hours, remote working or maternity leave and the work-life balance in general? Mm -hmm. I would say um, in the past two companies I've been working for, so obviously at, at Visible mm -hmm. as well, there's something that is quite unusual. And I would say specifically in France, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. enabling or allowing for women, a pregnant, pregnant woman to be recruited. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, organizing the working hours and, and the future setup to allow for still a career growth. And the reason why I'm saying that it's still very unusual in France is that we are still very conservative. And I remember, to be honest, when I came back from Singapore, so 20 years ago, I was pregnant, more than eight months pregnant, and I was searching for a job. And like everyone was just telling me that I was crazy. Like, mm -hmm. what did I think that I would find a job that someone would recruit me because I was pregnant? You know, it was obvious that it, it was just a waste of my time. Mm -hmm. And I want to return that trend. And, and, and I'm glad to see that around me, actually. There are companies, there are CEOs, there are uh, mm -hmm. other people who are willing to apply the same logic, like giving you the chance. That person is, mm -hmm. is, it could be a strong contributor when she returns. Okay. So making it possible. Mm -hmm. um, that that is one thing. Another one is that um, we allow a lot of part time, and I'm very impressed. For example, in my in my team, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's more than twenty percent of my team members who happen to work part time, and it's not only by by the way, not only women, they're wow. also men, which wow. which yeah. is amazing, yeah. right? That's it's amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. And 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 of course, I would say. It's pretty usual now after COVID, but at Visible, we implemented implemented a fully hybrid working mode where everyone is allowed to work fully from home all the time. Mm -hmm. And of course, we create a lot of um, systems and programs in order to enable for people to connect with each other, to see each other on a regular basis if needed and so on. But still, like we allow for such a work-life balance for everyone in our company. Um, to avoid long working, long commute um, time or to be more productive in your day and so on. So those would be three default measures um, that uh, we have been implemented. Amazing, amazing. And uh, would, you, uh, do, would you have any numbers handy that uh, would depict that the productivity has definitely improved or, you know, uh, the employees or the staff has been pretty fresh in their heads to, you know, deliver the task more quickly or more proactive? So we did not um, measure properly with, with, a, with such a, a metric. However, I can tell you that... Um, it's it's a permanent debate because um, companies are always afraid of losing track, of yeah. losing the, the, the company spirit, um, of not controlling anymore. But luckily, because we are uh, split across different markets and um, we're, we're with such a diversity, uh, we keep moving very fast. Um, and, and for sure, there's a cost, which is, that the management and I would say all of the managers, as long as you have someone in your team, you have to invest in communication, in connecting with your team members, in making sure that the, the, the flow of communication goes up and down right. all the time. So it requires a lot of efforts, but it pays off. I think there's, there's a, what we see at least in our company at Visible is that there's a high uh, level of satisfaction across uh, all the offices from all of the employees uh, based also on our flexibility, agility, and exploring different measures to enable right. for a better work-life balance. Right, right, true, true, true. So, Sandra, there's a saying over where, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty famous saying that it's no point crying over spilt milk, you know. So mm -hmm. let's assume you've got a time machine right in front of you right now, and you've got this opportunity to go back, uh, say, 15 years back and uh, just rectify any uh, mistakes or any learnings that you may have come across. If any, would you want to do that or you're uh, content with the experiences that you you've uh, got over the last 15 years or so in your professional work experience or you can you can uh, you know depict a personal personal experience as well mm. 
Would you like to change anything from the previous version? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yes, I think um, I made mistakes many times. Um, but but we learn from our mistakes. You know, this is also True. something that I tell my kids and my colleagues all the time. It's fine to make mistakes because actually that means that you are going outside of your comfort zone and you're taking risks. True. True. And I would tell you that it's probably only through the mistakes that I learned and I grew. True. And which is also one of the reasons why I always welcome annual performance reviews. You know, I, mm -hmm. they can also be perceived in a negative way, but I always, I'm always excited because I'm thinking, what else can I improve? <laughs> what is the next, what is my next opportunity for doing a better job, being a better person? Sure. On the other side, I have to admit that in some areas, I I wish I would learn faster <laughs> because I keep on making the same mistakes. There are pros and cons, you know. I, for example, I'm hardworking. I'm investing myself a lot in all other areas. I can't do things only at 100% or lower. And it has consequences. I tend to overwork. I tend to overthink. And I, I tend to overanalyze, overdeliver in all other areas, which takes <laughs> a lot of my energy. And I have a potential for burnout. And I know it. I know yeah. myself. So, sorry, it's a very complex answer. And it's not a yeah. <laughs> no, perfectly bl black or white. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Sandra. I mean, learning never stops. We learn, we learn no. each day, every day. So yeah, I mean, I mean, beautifully put it once again. Yes. Uh, I mean, 25 years of experience, Sandra, it's a big, big word. It's yeah. a big, big numbers, you know. And then listening to you and then, you know, explaining you, your stories and the struggles is like, it's crazy. I mean, the people that you face, the experience, the situations, consequences that you have to dealt with. And so, uh, which brings me another question. You, uh, right now that you have already reached to the highest positions in your organizations, how do you think, uh, how has your role evolved since you first started? That's a very interesting question. I, I love it. Thank you so much. You know, you know why? It's because I talk a lot to young, like, you know, the, the youngest generation, and they can't realize when I started working because I started my first job in 96 where internet in France was literally only about CD-ROMs wow. <laughs> and HTML websites. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it sounds really so crazy. Um, and I do a parallel with how much marketing has evolved as well because marketing doesn't have anything to do anymore with what we used to do at that time. Mm. Um, and, and marketing is a const, in, in a constant state of flux yeah. with an endless stream of new topics, ideas, media, channels, uh, approaches, topics. It's, it's mm. crazy. Like, and on top of that, you put the emergence of new technologies, which accelerated all of, the, of these at high speed. Mm. Um, and specifically, that explosion of communication technologies into the business environment over the past decades has added another layer of complexity in the traditional role. So I would say, um, you know, the marketing people, the mar marketing directors, they are no longer in lengthy meetings with colleagues or the management talking about billboards and mail shots, you know, and leaflets and, mm -hmm. or, or booths. Now there's really an issue about balancing between complex digital marketing strategies across multiple digital platforms with, right. on top of that, with clear data-driven goals. Because now you have access to, at least the data is in there, whether you have access to it and whether you can read it and whether you can draw conclusions, it's another topic. But you see, it has evolved so much in 25 years. And on top of that, I would say, we were referring before to the hybrid working mode. On top of that, you have the pandemic, the, the COVID pandemic uh, <laughs> that changed a lot. We were, we are confronted every day with an, an entire new way of working. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
and, and it has also an impact on our audiences because them as well they are they 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 have they are facing changes mm -hmm. um and, and and therefore the the behaviors the habits the expectations from your audiences are also changing at the high at, the, at a high speed so um and and i could even say on top of that right now we are facing a slower slowing economy at least in europe Mm -hmm. uh, rising inflation, supply chain disruption, and for sure, at visible, we are facing this every day um, through our, our the, the SMEs that that we support. So I would say the marketing director role has been shaken up. Right. And we have to prepare ourselves for this to continue. So it it will shift again. We will have to rewrite our book on everything. But personally, I find it probably the most exciting part of my role. It's because I know it's not going to stay like that. I know it's going to continue changing. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah. Change is the only constant, they say. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Great. Uh, so, uh, as Shamal already mentioned, this uh, one of the main goals and the concept of ours is uh, to create a platform and then uh, to help the women who struggle to, you know, grow in their professional and the personal uh, life, right? So from your uh, years of experience, what is the one takeaway that you would like to share with women who are going into, you know, tech? Very good question. I would say stay focused. Yes. Mm -hmm. Know your strengths, work on your weaknesses, Mm -hmm. Never stop growing, never stop mm -hmm. learning, build on your path, mm -hmm. but look forward, mm -hmm. not backwards. Remember why you are doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. why you decided to go in this direction and listen to your heart. You probably already know what your big goal is, what you're, what you're expecting, right. what you're, what inspires you. Right. What makes you wake up? What make what excites you and nurture that? That would be my my recommendation. Wonderful. Wonderful. Nice, nice. So, um, I mean, I mean, this is the coming to the end of our interview. One of the uh, last but not the least of the questions. They well, do you have any quote that you want to share with us, which motivates you, or the uh, you know motto that you live by, or any advice that you would like to give? To the younger generation? I would say, in, in general, I would say be patient, be gentle with yourselves. Yeah. Uh, but above all, be confident in your capacity to get where you want. Mm -hmm. uh, it took me so long to acquire some kind of peace and confidence. Mm -hmm. Um, I have been so strict with myself trying to be good in many things like being a mother, a daughter, a spouse, a professional. This is all what women face. Right. Um, I build my own career, not allowing for mistakes, not taking time for myself. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm giving back that recommendation. Be patient and be gentle and be confident. Those would be my three words. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Be gentle, be kind, be confident. We'll remember that. So, Sandra, thank you very much. It was a lovely and a great discussion with you. I mean, listening to your experiences, it was such an inspiring story for ourselves for now, right now. I can't wait to share with our, you know, target audience. Uh, so thank you again for, uh, you know, Having uh, showing an interest and then you know uh, helping our younger generation of women inspire them and then giving advices, giving a heads up for women empowerment. Thank, thank you so much for inviting me. That was really a pleasure and thanks for uh, allowing for this space, for this forum, and for uh, your dedication to this to this cause. We can call it like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Sandra. I mean, uh, you have you have so beautifully put uh, all your points forward, and uh, you know anyone who's going to view this will definitely agree to me if I have to summarize this whole uh, interactive mm -hmm. session in just one line where you've kept the basics, your complete focus. You know, 
be it patience, be it self-confidence, be it focus on one thing. These are the basics that we keep hearing from the time that we've taken birth, you know, but more often than not, we tend to ignore that and then succumb under the pressure of your peers and whatever you see on social media and then tend to forget things which are the most basic and the most important and you have very beautifully put your points forward and uh, I'm sure the audience is going to take uh, notes from what you've spoken today so it's been a crazy crazy uh, you know uh, last 45 minutes uh, interacting with you Sandra thank you so much for your time thank you to both of you